Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, song can chef demo with Alex Rototo of the Lugia Company. We're just getting set up right now. Welcome, everybody, to our live stream. We are actually streaming live off of Mission Street between 4th and 5th Street at Bali Creative Studios. We're just getting situated right now. So bear with us. We'll get started in a few minutes. While we're getting everybody, while we're getting situated, let me know where everyone's at. Put on the chat where you guys are listening and zooming in from. I'm going to put it in the chat. I am live in Roma for Yes. Let me know where you guys are at in the chat. Where are you guys? Where is everybody from? How are you guys doing? It's Lucas Chef here with my brother Desi. I don't know if he's my big brother or my little brother, but he's my brother. I'm your extra medium side brother. Extra medium, and then I'm uh, not, I'm like uh, 2x. And uh, today we're gonna like show you how not to be 2x all the time. We're gonna, we're gonna help you. We're gonna, we're gonna do Lumpia style. Help right here. And what I have here is uh, the new weapon of mass destruction. We got the air fry, you guys. So uh, I want to let you know before we proceed further, I got a new shirt coming out. It's going to be with like a movie uh, chef uh, emblem, kind of like Michael Jordan, but he's going to be like a chubby uh, silhouette of Michael Jordan. Hopefully, uh, my basket in Lumpia is we call it air. <laughs> oh, air fryer. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be a belly in the hat. So just wanna let you know that uh, we're gonna have fun today. And this is what we do. This is like the the uh, way that I came up with the Lumpia company. And today I'm just gonna vibe with my brother Desi. And uh, just to let you know before we move, move forward, um, we're powered by red numbers. <laughs> so Desi said, hey, you know, we'll go across the street to the second border. Let's get a shot, man. We, have it. Um, Yo, we got somebody from Jersey in the house. We got Jason. Jersey. Jersey, are you uh, Jets or Giants? Jets or Giants? Let us know. Jets or Giants? Mets or Yankees? Oh, he said Giants. Giants. All right. Mets. You're a Yankees fan. You're Giants. Yankees or Mets? Knicks or Nets? Which here in the Bay, we have that many selections. It'd be Giants, A's, and then there's just Starks, Niners, Raiders, and we left that one team. Uh, sorry, okay. I'm going to switch the camera real quick so they can see uh, who, I, who I am. So here I am. I'm Desi. I'm your host with the most. I am actually right across from. Uh, Alex and we are streaming live in this stupid little hub here in Soma, Filipinas, called the Balai Creative Studios out of here in Mission Street. I'm not the only one here. We have an artist, Vivian Kulong, who is working on a beautiful piece that's going to be 
showing a couple of gardens in a little bit. Hey, Vivian, just wait real quick. Vivian, so there's Vivian. Hi. Our panelists move back over here. Focus back onto our star. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Alex, what are we cooking today? All right, so what's the theme today? Yes, we're going healthy. We're going healthy. So you told me on the phone going healthy. I was like, I got a little bit of that. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Sometimes I have people that come to the shop and then they tell me, hey, the movie was good, but it was too oily. Yeah, it's cooked in oil. So it's like, so today we're going to show you the alternative. We're going to show you the healthier way. And with the whole air fryer craze, we're going to do just that. And this is like, I know air fryers have been in the market for two, three, four, eight, I don't know, around there. But it's still brand new. People don't know the techniques. I didn't even know the techniques with my product, but I had to test it out before I filled out the uh, cooking instructions. So today we're going to start from scratch. You know, I didn't make anything. I'm not going to want to steward it and just have things prep, 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 and then here we go. We're going to go through the whole process, but we're just going to make one look good. And we're going to have fun doing it because I brought all my stuff here. I brought peppers and I traveled. I didn't keep things frozen. Dry ice. And look what happened to my That pepper. looks like a strawberry, yo. Look at what happened to my pepper. It's frozen. Yep. But this one's good. We did it all. But hey, give it some time. I'm going to put this to the side. And we're going to prep the lumpia company technique of our veggie lumpia. And I'm going to show you the inspiration. And we're going to like make a couple of tweaks and make it one of a kind. So inside of this veggie lumpia, uh, what, what, hey Desi, what goes inside of like, what do you know, common knowledge of like Filipino veggie lumpia? Veggie lumpia, yeah. um, you're gonna put um, Ken Kong in there. Yep. And then you're gonna put some uh, water spinach in there. Yep. And then there's gotta be some onions in there. I always gotta have some onions, right? Carrots, uh, some carrots, yeah, some root vegetables. Right. Green beans, yeah, you So that's how mom made it. And but the thing is, after the cheeseburger movie out of Shanghai and all of these like Instagram movies I would make, uh, I needed to have a veggie option and I needed, I needed to start a business. So if I made the veggie movies that mama made, they would never make it better than mama. They would make it better than auntie. I needed to make a, there's lots more vegetables out there. I'm a Filipino chef making things. So um, there's a lot of organic grocery stores next to my house. And I said, hey, I want to make my own version of a veggie lumpia because it could never be my version. And I started a lumpia company. I need to make a product I can sell in stores or I can sell frozen to you. So I had to pivot and improvise and make something that maybe I would like. I didn't know what the, the community liked. So I said, hey, I want a veggie lumpia that fills you up a little bit more. Um, and, you know, Cabbage is already in there. So I need to pick a new different green. So I went kale. Oh, kale. shit. California style. California style, right? Kale. You like kale, right? How do you like to eat your kale? Uh, I like it uh, thinly cut into strips because it's hella stringy and tough. All right, we'll do, we'll do it just like that today. And I said, kale, when am I going to, what's the next thing I have to kale? Quinoa. Yeah. <laughs> No, shrooms, mushrooms. So I don't know. I bought more than we're gonna cut today, but it's a medley. We're gonna put a medley you know, mushrooms into this 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 creation today. Uh, the TLC veggie lumpia has kale, portobellos, or baby bellas, whatever we can get. Um, you know, to to make more like two thousand lumpias, and then a lot of garlic, a lot of garlic. And what else do we put in there? Garlic and, and uh, mushrooms and potatoes. We're going to put all those into there. And I'm going to show you how we cook it. And this is actually the real way that we prep the TLC lumpia, the kale portobello and mushroom potato lumpia, is that we oven roast it. And if you guys don't know, you guys don't know air fryers are basically ovens with 
you know, but they made them so convenient and you can buy it at Target, you can buy it at Best Buy, you can buy it at Costco. It's just an end thing. It's called an air fryer. But when you join a bakery, you know, it's a strong fan. And it's been there for like seven years. So it's nothing new, but this is brand new. This is like my R2D2 thing. So we're going to turn this guy on. Uh, and uh, we're going to cut through these veggies. So we're going to make this veggie bowl. And, and, and if you can see the label, it's right here. See all that green? You got the kale, you got the portobello, sweet potato. We'll just change that up. We're going to do Yukons today, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, fellow and mix it with some shiitake. I got a quiz for everybody uh, in the Zoom. How do you say sweet potato in Tagalog? Put it in chat if you know the answer. Real Tagalog, not, not like Taglish. No one knows. Is no. it uh, Kimoto? Oh, Nora says Kamote. Kamote. There's Kamote and there's Kamatas. So when they came out with that stuff, Man, they said, that's like, who, who decided to make the chicken? Like they said, let's make tomatoes and potatoes very similar, but just change the second letter. Colonizers. I never, I never really realized that until now. Come on, take them out. So, yeah. Any other questions before we get started? Well, let's start chopping up. All right, good. Yeah. So while you're chopping up, uh, I kind of want to tell a little story of uh, Alex's background. Like Alex and I actually have very similar backgrounds. We're, we're not trained chefs uh, by far. Actually, Alex and I kind of came up in the scene uh, right around the same time in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. This is all before the world of COVID when there was a really vibrant like Filipino DJ club scene. And Alex Rototo was infamous infamous in throwing some of the biggest parties. I didn't even know that guy. Yeah. What, what were some of the, the clubs you used to throw parties at before you, you turned into a food entrepreneur? Man, I could go down the list. And it's it, it's like, you wouldn't believe we did this. Thing. And what I think, when I say we, I just had a whole crew behind me, but I was just, you know, I guess I was in front. But the, the, the main one that started the whole industry here was, uh, when you're 18, right? And you're 18, you, you, you're, you're like 1996, 97. I was already going to city nights when I was like 1994. I was 15 and my brother stuck me in uh, and, and I got to see how that was, but city nights. And what the thing is, city nights was really, as they would say today, lit <laughs> on Saturdays and Fridays. And, 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 you know, you're Asian, you're Filipino, you're, you know, you're Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, and you would go to these clubs, and at this time, you would, you'd feel short, you'd feel smaller, you'd be like, hey, man, there's, nobody wants to dance with me here, you know, or, or like, I don't feel, it, it, it is what it is, the times are different now. Damn, you got hell personal there. Yeah. You know, but I'm just saying that that's, I'm just, this is history, man. You went to nightlife? It's like, we created that opportunity. We said, hey, we need to put, we got man, heck of DJs. We got DJ Mel and DJ, uh, what was Proof's name before? Uh, 100 Proof. 100 Proof before, you know what I mean? And, and we want our own DJs. I mean, we had the radio DJs. You got Jazz and Jim, you had Rick Lee. Everyone knew that, but... But to pull a great party, the DJs want to come out. So, you know, a lot of them were great. And we were able to say, hey, hey, City Nights, can we get our own night? And we said, hey, uh, what night do you make $0 on? And it was Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we're like, club night. Like, Wednesday night, club night? Like, oh wasn't even a thing yet like maybe for like workers or something but like college kids and stuff like that we created this opportunity and said 
people want to go out in the middle of their college week. And Wednesday will be their most celebrated night because that's the, the halftime and you're just going to go all out. It was our weekend warriors. That weekend started on Wednesday for me. So we said, hey, City Nights, give us, this is what the first deal I ever struck. So like, give us, like, you know, the door and, 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 and sliding scale bonuses and like let us like help help us like get the flyers out and all that stuff and we started with 10 people then we then it went to 13 people and then the next Wednesday was was Memorial Day weekend and we hit 600 people yeah. and then then we were just on autopilot ever since and that was like the uh, Motown like that was our showtime at the Apollo for, for like Asian American artists. And what I mean, it's not, it wasn't just Filipino, like Filipino spearheaded like the music movement, but it was Asian American. This, it was a scene because there was this party called Moody Ha and there's other parties that started this whole thing. And if you know what the import scene is, there was cars just driving around Third Street, and Harrison mm -hmm. Street, and they, they just drive around because they have the coolest NSX. And it, it's just two Asian guys. Yeah. They just felt cool. And they would rev their throttle their, their car and just Red drive stickers. around and around. And stickers, the more stickers, the faster the car, right? So you it, did. It, it was the start of the import scene. It was the start of the import model scene. It was the start of the Asian R&B singer scene. It was the start of of, uh, there was no chef back then. We were just like dance crews and model crews, and that's how we. That's how we spoke. That was the only gathering there was, and we just saw the opportunity to gather people and just get DJs. So cool, nice. All right. So we got a little tangent over there in our deep history, but let's, let's get on that time. Let's get to the food, Alex. Let's let's do some chopping. All right. So mushrooms. <laughs> Um, we're not going to chop through all these because the capacity of this guy is just like two, two planes here. So what I like to do with the mushrooms here, I got a portobello cap here, got another cap here, and then I'm going to mix it with, if you look up top here, yep. uh, so I'm going to do this should be a good portion for what we're going to make. Is there a special way you're going to chop that? Up? I'm going to do a thicker dice. So, because when you roast these inside an uh, oven or a uh, air fryer, mushroom holds a lot of water. And when it roasts, it's just like it, it's half the size. So, we're going to chop these guys up right here. And I'm just going to do Pretty thick dice right there. And I'm gonna set these aside and I'm just gonna cut through these. And these, these were pre-washed at my uh, kitchen earlier today. So we're gonna make these from scratch. So like, what's your favorite mushroom, bro? Uh, psychedelic ones? Yeah. Dude, I love mushrooms, but if I'm on mushrooms, I just, I just, I just be like, Hey man, it is a a mushroom focus. So what I want to do is these about the size I want to get them. And usually I just do this recipe with uh, the uh, portobello caps, but I wanted to do a little something special with a little medley of like shiitake and bite and then the. Uh, And what I like about the bell caps a lot, they're like easier like so, and they're juicier. Like sometimes you could get it tasting like steak. So when I was like coming up with this recipe, I was cooking with my, my best buddy Eats by E, and he helped come up with this recipe with me. And he, he was originally like portobello, sweet potato, and uh, mushroom. I improvised it. I mean, I just educated it to be like a lot more garlicky too. And just measurements of it. 
So I like the yellow caps. Look how I can just and these days, and I'm not capping up Luffy as much as I am some of this fight. It's fun today. Now I'm looking at payroll. <laughs> Are you doing thing. that? You're doing payroll? Yeah, I try not to look at it. PPPs, EIDL, EIDLs. So, as you called me, and I had an opportunity to look at it, let's go. A little bit I know that we were sipping on some bread. And you know your movie is not authentic. Yeah. You're not outstanding to go on the So, you know, 2020 was pretty rough for a lot of folks. How was it for your business? I'm not gonna lie, man. Um, but year for our business, you know. Um, uh, just the four years leading up to this pandemic, I just had a concept of just you know, with a takeout window, and I didn't want to take care of like all the other stuff. I just wanted to get the food out quick and just have a lot of options. And it was in Oakland, and I took over this uh, uh, window office, and we put tiles on, made it a takeout window, and it was pretty steady. And then the pandemic hit, and I was nervous as that, and um, our our sales just doubled, if not tripled, time. And like all you know, all my employees, I, I hired two times the amount that I had. And we had to like just grow because we created a service that people could just drive up, park on a street that just supported us in Oakland. And, and, and it was just, it was, it was magic. And, and it just, it's been great. Uh, and it got us stronger to where now we're confident to, to open up another, uh, more projects. And, it, you know, we're blessed. We've been blessed, pleased to say. Well, congratulations, man. Yeah. You know, during these like rough times, the, the strong survive, and obviously, like you know, your brand, your flavors have been able to pull through. That's good. I'd like to say we're super lucky, you know. Now, I'm gonna ask out in the in the Zoom room, you know, people who've had Alex's uh, lumpia, what is your favorite flavor? What are some of the flavors you got? You got like peach cobbler, right? Yeah. What else you got? You got like a cheesesteak burger. Cheese steak and a burger. So we have the bacon cheeseburger. That's like our first one we ever like, grew up with. And then the cheese steak I make as a special. Yep. You got you got a Tanola one too, right? So Tanola's like the go-to. Yeah. That's that's the one where I say like the naysayer said that I don't make Philippine flavors. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I make my fil favorite Filipino dish and and, and Transform it magically into a loop. That's like asking somebody to make pho, a pho flavored egg, you know? So, um, you gotta come out the shop and really see what it's all about. And that's the one where aunties, they're like, they're like, oh, I don't know. And then they try the Tanola or the dinner go on one you have, right? <laughs> and then they say, okay. <laughs> they let off. They're like, okay, we do it. All right, so what's next? You chopped up the, uh, the mushrooms. I yeah, chopped up the mushrooms. Next is uh, golden yucas. All right, so we're going to do this, the same dice with these. Um, just dip a little half there. And I'm going to cut it. So I don't like French fries or dip. So we got a question from Elisa. She wants to know can you just use a food processor and just chop this up to save some time? Uh, you got to have really good one. And, that, and, and what we do at the kitchen is we use the, uh, the Robocoop and it has a dicer. And we do about, how can I say, like, we, we do about 200 pounds of mix. So these things just flutter out. I just push it down, mm -hmm. it goes through a dice plate. Just, yeah. Yes, so we can. But the ones at home, um, I like to get that accurate. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Elisa's asking, like, if, if you make it too fine, is it going to be because It does. So that's a good question. So it means a lot to me, too. 
because over two weeks of duration. So that's why I'm here today. I'm, my, my dear friend, Pam Kelly, we locked arms in the struggle, this climate movement struggle, this climate crisis struggle, this protect my earth struggle, all that we want. The same thing. Good My hope and my dream is it, 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 it messed up the raft. The water created holes in it, and my lucas would explode. So it means a lot to me because I, my wife now, she was like, she she was the owner of a commercial kitchen, and I would purposely ask her What's to work together What's there. When we'll be blowing up, we need tips and stuff. And she taught me how to use the oven and the air front, well, the oven to to roast your veggies before you put them in the veggie yeah, so it won't explode and then if it doesn't explode you have pretty yeah in san francisco so that that's 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 the best question i ever heard thank you Lisa. we got a lot of pro home chefs in the room so going back to that question what is your favorite lumpia company flavor uh, Right now? No, I don't. Look at the people here. Look at you, Popper, man. Look at you, Popper. That's mine. Um, you really know me. And my Shanghai. The Shanghai. Oh, the classic. No. Um, classic, but Beagle style. Uh, Nora likes the cheeseburger. Mm hmm. The cheeseburger I love. That was the first time I ever got love on Instagram. But Come by the shop, you ask me, I like spicy food. And jalapeno popper, it's not for everybody, but it's for me, because there's a lot of cream cheese, smoky bacon, and I dip that thing into, it has a lot of garlic. Yeah, I dip that thing into strawberry jam. So I think that's my favorite. So Pico Express Shanghai, the Shanghai pickle shrimp with, with, with red peppers and coconut. Ooh. Be ready to get the Beagle Express and City near you. Very cool. All right, so we got the Yukon. So there's like thousands and hundreds of thousands of different types of potatoes. Why the Yukon versus, uh, let's say, the, uh, you know, <laughs> the russet? Yeah, the russet. Well, and the sweet potato. Um, I'll tell you what, it's tasty, but the real reason why is you just them. And got a pure. Mm. We're making thousands of oranges. The labor is crazy. You, you're going to be watching me do this chip, 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 chip. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Like, we just want to wash these up and then, like, put them in. So that um, that's the number one reason. I substitute a whole lot of potatoes, but the Yukons are just so versatile and they're easy to roast and love. Cool. All right, so we got some potatoes chopped up. What's next? Uh, we, got, we, got, we got the kale. Oh, shit. So the gulai. The gulai. Yep. Yeah. And that's the favorite color. And when, when I released the kale, obviously, I was going after a certain community. And I love that community. I was, uh, when I first started, I was doing breweries. I was at a uh, faction brewing, it's a mescal brewing. And a lot of people were asking for a vegan option. I mean, I like best. <laughs> kind of. They said, yeah, he does like kale, right? What's a Berkeley bowl? I got a dinosaur. Dinosaur was a little different. I just like this organic. Classic mustard green kale. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wild. And it's just so different. And it, this kid has, has a huge following, man. I'm a coke promoter. I'm, I'm, I'm here to like talk to the masses. Please the people. Please the people. Yeah, who can look at what you serve at the plant? Um, you know, we stay, stay, stay with the classes since we did the pork uh, Yeah. Yep. Put it up and sold uh, a couple of pieces and sold it for like, at that time, which was kind of crazy, $9. Dude. Right. Yeah. Tim, Tim had a, 
just like mama made it, uh, the chicken, chicken lollipops. You know? Oh yeah. We get from there. The adobo wings. And like back then I was just enjoying the food, but I was never, I never had a chef mentality. I just had a eater's mentality. So I knew that, but I never thought you know, 15 years later, I'd be cooking. Like, wow, I'm walking into your restaurant, in your oil. <laughs> you guys were just the first thing. First guys in Filipino food in San Francisco. Amazing, man. Well, thanks for bringing up that history. Yeah, yeah, dude, I want you to get into it because you just brought up all my history. Oh, shit. Um, Emily uh, asks, is it okay to add egg if you're looking at Shanghai, like the yolk? And uh, uh, if it's a uh, hacking in Tagalog, okay. Uh, egg yolk for the young white for South the heat with your wrapper. Oh, so like to I, wash the wrapper with the egg yolk? Yeah, um, we're gonna go there. Uh, but yes, that is the, uh, I should say, the easiest way to do it. Is the egg egg white? Sometimes uh, when I'm rolling the bacon cheeseburgers and they don't have to stay vegan, I put a ton of egg white in it's my glue. But um, as far as putting egg into the Shanghai, yes, yes. Lots of egg bind bind all of that together so that when you're uh, you're uh, putting the lucas into like portions, they like stick together. Cool. Thank you, Emily, for getting the geek to keep us on check and focusing us on the food. Because we're a bunch of old old guys talking about our club days. <laughs> you know what? These people, the community is never going to have to have it. That's my thing. That should be in the history of this. Yeah, man. man. That's like taxi hall, taxi dance hall status. Yeah. Yep. Seriously, like, uh, it, it won't be in history books, but maybe, maybe it should be, it should be like, seriously, man. Like we read about what went down in Stockton and what else would be the leaders of a nightlife industry mm -hmm. in San Francisco. We were the leaders. We weren't in LA when we were trying to compete with Brian Austin Green for a venue. Mm -hmm. We had Mission Rock. We had the gift center. We had all the venues because we're the only ones that can fill them up. Should be in history. Yes. Yep. All right. So we're gonna get to the kale, guys. Kale in. Let's go. So this is uh, organic kale. You can. It doesn't have to be organic, but we're on the show right now. All the good stuff, right? I like to go burglary bowl, I like to go, you get this stuff that's safe, right? So, um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna put the stems in. Those take a lot of work to make whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go with So is this like broccoli where you gotta like blanch it in hot water or just go straight to it? I'm going to, when, I normally deep fry it. It's doused in oil um, for five minutes and it cooks it wonderfully. Today we're air frying and that oil is not touching it. So I'm going to show you techniques on how to capture that flavor. What it's saying. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to season this. But um, I like to, when I first made it, I used to roast it all and then just get a little bit too charred. Mm. So with our, our current product, I put it in blocks. That's the fresh component. So uh, what I'm gonna do is like fold it up. So what am I gonna do? This kale, you want to when you fold it up, you're going to cut the two layers. Wow, you can treat the new one. Uh, 
um, really it's like when I when I just started this company, I was like a nerd. Like you know when you, you like electronics, you get lost in like fries. Mm. Remember fries? They're no longer, but you want to look at all the electronics or Best Buy. That's like your your Toys R Us. What Toys R Us was like Berkeley Bowl. Or what's the one on on, on um, the one on uh, Van Ness? Rainbow Grocery. Rainbow Grocery. You know? And it's like, it's like we got all kinds of greens there. All kinds of fucking olive oils. It's the best, right? Yeah. Like, you see like sweet? Can you go out to like grocery store like that? Yeah. Where else do you go? I like going to New May Walk and like going off to like the, I guess I like the, there's the Indonesian section, right? There's the Japanese section. They got all kinds of like different spices, different kinds of teas, different kinds of snacks. I don't even know where that is, dude. I'm, you're a native now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... All right, who in the chat? What's, what's your favorite Asian supermarket or just like, just supermarket in general to get like the hard to find ingredients. Mine is New May Wa, Inner Sunset. Where is my uh, Berkeley Bowl? Do you stay? I get it in small batch and big batch. That's what that's what's amazing about it. You go to the back and you get it for like big unit, you know. Right. You have to choose Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Traders, when you have a kid, tend to respect traders. Um, their ingredients are clean, uh, and it's all nicely packaged, and the lines are managed a lot better. Mm. Whole Foods makes you take a pack around, and they got a lot of stuff. But I mean, and to answer to further that question, sprouts. <laughs> Wow. No one's there. <laughs> I, get, I get my shopping done in a third of the time, man. So um, I'm almost done with the kale. But, um, to give it one last fine shot, you want to like and, uh, Sorry. So, it's not man. You get this at any Asian grocery store. I'm not here, like, trying to front up like, my new store off or anything. It's like, Man, this is this is like this is what you find in every Asian. I'm glad you bring that up because every chef that comes on to the show will ask them what their favorite knife is. The consensus 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 seems to be these butcher school knives. Yes, love these, man. And you know what, man? I'm the guy that just can't take care of my mic. My ones. I just get things dirty and drop drop knives and. It's like, oh, you spend like seven hundred dollars on this knife. Hey, this one is six hundred and ninety-nine, man. Yeah, you know, just sharpen your sharpen your knives. So, uh, Rose Lynn wants to know: Should we preheat our oven? So, so you, you're like my like my producer right here. So that's what that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna preheat the oven. It takes about five minutes. Okay. So um, whether you have the uh, air fryer. I have like the cuisine art. I have, uh, and now I just got this because I'm big on the brand Instapot. Instapot saved my life so many times. It just cooked rice mobily. Like, so I thought I'd give this a try, and I just got it this week, and it worked wonderful. So, what we're going to do is open this up, and I am going to, can you see the settings here? Uh, let me switch cameras. You might have to. Turn that not really. Turn it towards this front camera over here and you can see it a little bit. Just give a little pivot. Give a little pivot. There we go. We can see it now. All right. So I'm at 350. 
and I will I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 10 minutes and it's gonna pre and what's cool is the light and then I'm sure that comes standard and all all everything so I'm gonna that's the eyeball around the kale that I'm gonna do I'm going to put my kale in here. So uh, Jason wants to know, uh, should you use some kind of cooking spray in the air fryer? Man, why are people so smart? I'm like, I'm just like messing up my show here. Like, what's the next step? I should have segmented that right now. Um, and then I'm going to put the kale in there. Should I put it in the leave it up to you guys on which cooking spray you want me to use today. Um, effectively, you know, the extra version with the aerosol spray spreads everything out nice. I can kind of show both, but coconut oil refined has good smoke point. Um, as you can tell, we're a little under room temp, it's a little cold here, and it's still liquid. So if you have any other coconut oil, ones that come in the can, it's solid right now until it hits the pan. This one you can pour in, and this is a product from the Philippines. So, and I didn't buy it because it was when I was in shopping at a, a shop in uh, Carrington Farms, and that read in the back it says, uh, product from the Philippines right here, man. That was pretty cool. So coconut oil or olive oil? What yeah. do you guys want? Let us know. Put it in the chat. What's your vote? Coconut oil, olive oil. Okay, one of them's gonna have a little bit of flavor to it, wouldn't it? There's no flavor in this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna olive yeah. oil on the inside. Oh, Leta, good, good answer. She put in olive oil. She was reading your mind. So I'm gonna olive oil the bowl and I'm getting the sides. Get that over there right there. Okay. The here also said olive oil. Okay. Look what I got here, garlic guys. So I'm gonna show you what I want to do with this garlic. Okay. Um Gilroy, right? Bay Area. Um, we're known for wine here because of Napa, but the garlic in the bay in Gilroy. And I wish my first name was Christopher, last name Branch. Because <laughs> those guys are killing me. So uh, with this measure, I don't know if you guys agree with uh, what this, this saying is, but there could never be enough garlic. Do you guys agree with that? Unless you're a vampire or something like that. What do you guys think? Should I put all of this in? Rose, but yes, put it all in. All right. So I'm just going to give it a slight shot. Right? I'm going to like, go for it. I'm not going to mm -hmm. do a whole dice. CM's like, yes. I'm going to go like five times through. And I'm not going to like puree. I mean, how big is this Lydia going to be if you stick all this garlic? Be like, I mean, I could I, sometimes it's like today. Today, I mean, I'm watching the light. Like, well, you know, you're just flying through and you go, oh, yeah, it's like, why not? Man? We're doing it, we're making a measure on it. And if, if we're not, you're giving me the rules of I'm not going to deep fry. Well, you can roast. And pre cook the inside, mm. you can force that flavor in there so much more. What the good thing about deep rack is that you doused it and you're deep into the, the, the oil, the ocean of oil, and that flavor cooks in. But, but I mean, you can't do flavor oil with the deep fryer. You, you're not going to fill your deep fryer with, with garlic olive oil. And then, you can't smoke it like we are. So, 
Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this the speaking road, Kale, Portobello. How many cloves of garlic was that? Two on the recipe, 10. I told you 10. I told you 10. This is like very close. So I'm going to And it's going to roast down to sometimes when you do this, you don't get the color at all. So I'm going to put it in and that's about five cloves right there. Oh, oh six, maybe seven, ten. ten. Oh, oh, nine. I see nine. All right, so you want to, you do want to get your hands on there. Okay. Come on, man. What am I going to do with this? Throw it away. Like, just do it. Go for it. Yeah. You guys good with this? I mean, this is a garlic. Look, your wife might not have a garlic. I mean, I mean, Filipino recipes can be garlic, but this is a veggie looking kale. You, you need something to like work with the kid too. So, go. Oh. And, Keep in mind, we're not we're not going to cook all of this right now. I'm just showing you essentially the whole thing. All right, we need more oil. It needs to be mixed in. So why use spray versus just like bottle of olive oil? Um, you can just spot this, um, but. When you lay it on a pan, it's a lot better. You get delicious. And especially when we're doing a demo, I gotta like reset my hands and everything. So there uh, we go. So I am going to fill this up with oh you know what I forgot? Salt. That too. I saw that on the pan. I'm gonna add a little spice. Oh shit! Heat. I mean, I'm not making this as a product for you guys. I'm making it for us. What kind of peppers are those again? Just so red jalapenos. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go seeds. We're gonna go with the seeds. Is there a difference in having seeds and not having oh, yeah. seeds? So from like from one to ten, how spicy is this gonna be? With this? Okay. Uh, you're asking about it. No, no, no. For the customer, this is a, I mean, this is. Yes. So this is a one of one. We made this recipe without adding this to it. I was like, why not? You know, because. Air frying is like it's, we're experimenting today. You know? Today I thought this is the Lumpia lab, guys. This is the lab we're trying out what happens if I have you know the chunky with the seeds. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna do about four of them and see if it comes out and it blends in well with the garlic and the kale. See all those seeds? Those are going in, guys. So, you guys like spicy food? They do. Yeah, they do. Spice the way spicy food. Being that this is a demo, I'm playing around. Am I allowed to play around? Yes, sir. So, I think. so I'm going to put those in. So we got the uh, we got the peppers, we got the uh, mushrooms, we got the potatoes in there, right? Yeah. What about the camote? We got camote in there too. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about the blue eye, yo? Blue eyes can go into the mix. All right. And I'm going to squeeze it in before we go in. Where did everybody come? Let's just throw it all in. Throw it up in the chat. Where are you guys at right now? See, now this is where they need gloves, right? Let's make this mix everything together. I don't want to get no peppers in your fingers. Oh, food is almost ready. Oh, it's turning. We are uh, we are behind. Sorry about that. Okay, so we gotta start over. Sorry, guys. I'm having too much fun. Uh, pre pre heat pre heat. Cancel. So the buttons need to be taking heat and taking blood off. Right, so it's pretty damn hot. Yeah, nice. It's at 350. We got three levels. So I'm going to have to do the re pre heat. Air fresh. Any other questions, guys? You guys, where, where's everybody from? And if there was a lumpia that you wanted me to make that you've never seen before, or you could ask me if I made it, what flavor do you want to see? Ooh. Chicken in a salad. Ooh, how would you do that? I just think that when the barbecue is there, you just want to, you don't you want to break through the lumpia wrap already. You get to it. But um, play with it. Yeah, Alisa's like pinning bit. Oh yeah, I have those. Someone said yeah, we sold that at undiscovered. That's right. Those uh, kare kare. That's like undiscovered number one. Yeah, was like our peanut sauce on the side. Braised oxtail. Oh, I need geez. to make that. What's your favorite movie you have, Ooh, well, I would say either the cheeseburger or the kane kane. Yeah. Didn't you have like an apple? Apple pie one? Yeah, that was pretty good too. Oh, yeah. That was like for Thanksgiving, right? It was the apple pie one with like. It used to be every day, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so Stephen was asking, what kind of peppers did we use? Red jalapenos today. Um, they're not much heat. It's not like Thai chili, but they're pretty. They, uh, they're going to show nicely against the green. So that's why I chose red. What do you guys like Shanghai jalapenos? Are you like? It's funny how mom calls them veggie lumpias. <laughs> They're not really veggie. They have ground beef or ground chicken. They say, yeah, this is the veggie lumpia. Mom, but it has meat in it, but it has vegetables. <laughs> I get it. They're saying that it has vegetables and meat, but not just meat carrots. So what do you guys like better? What what version do you like? Deep fried or just freshly rolled? Ooh. And the fresh game. I gotta step step up my game. Okay. This is great. Rose said Mongo Lupia sweet or savory Mongo. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's I hear you. And yeah, Lisa's like, maybe hollow hollow lupia is a dessert with ube and coconut sauce. We made a hollow hollow with Yana. That was really good. It was her idea. Um and it was it. Like, and it's when I first started, so I didn't even make one of them all over here. And we made it for like PJ's birthday or something. Uh, wait, wait, how did you guys make the hollow hollow over here? Explain that to me. I got a ube smear on the bottom. And then um, then you get the can, you got the cans from like Seafood City, right? Because they had all the pieces of the beans and the jackfruit and some mango. And uh, the lychee, mm -hmm. and it was just like 
and if, and if we don't rap it because it was so moist. So uh, that's what kind of made it special. And it was like a big pillow room here, man. Mm -hmm. So so that so I'm spraying spraying my veggies right here. Yeah. On the top. All right, so uh, we are putting the veggies in the air fryer before they're wrapped up. What's going on over here? So the veggies we got inside here is the potatoes and mushrooms and peppers and garlic. And when I was making this look at it, I wanted to roast up my veggies so that it packed up, it cooked the flavor inside of the veggie, and then it took away the moisture, so it didn't uh, affect the wrapper. So, and little did I learn is that, man, roasting garlic and roasting mushrooms and roasting potatoes, uh, and nicely seasoned, which I didn't season. So, thanks for uh, reminding me. <laughs> And then go straight up top. Yeah. And there are two ways to add the salt. Salt and pepper yeah. on top. And here too. And this is a mixture of salt, pepper, and granulated garlic. And I, I just like oh, some more garlic. Yeah. I mean, so we're going to. Man, what did salt bay like fall up, man? I was like, I think he's great, but it's like, oh, I see too much of it. Like, come on. It's also, it's a format. He's playing it out. I got it. So. All right, so for some reason, I thought that we were going to wrap these vegetables in a lupia wrapper and then put it in the fry. So no, no. We cook these are. I don't know, there's no one way to call them. They are the oven roasted in drink like inside, and then we take them back out, let them cool a little bit, and then we mix it with the chopped kale that we have here. And then we roll. So we pack the flavor in before, because there's no way it's gonna be as flavorful if I just put it straight in in the air fryer. Maybe if you deep fry, but I like the smoky texture. The, the like, I think uh, Salil wrote, wrote a, a, a crit, you know, her critique on my little kids. And I just noticed she put this article out in September. I just saw it yesterday. And she said, the TLC veggie, which is this one, is my favorite one because the mushroom is a jerky ish type of. Flavor that adds to the landscape of the monkey. See, I don't have that cat because I'm putting it straight to her. So that's that's what I, I roast the veggies before I roll them. So that's the, that's why this monkey is so special to me. I put a lot of thought into it. And I can tell you where I came up with the idea. I was doing something stupid but fun. I was making a pizza monkey. And I wanted to make a pizza supreme lumpia in, in honor of the King Arthur Supreme. And what I did was I just, okay, it's mushrooms, pepperoni, sausage, red onions, uh, all of that good stuff. Throw it in, mix it with cheese, put it in, deep fry. It was okay, but it exploded. It's like, it just, the wrapper got affected. It wasn't a pretty lumpia. So I said, huh, I wanted to like bite it smell and have the aroma of the pizza part. So what I did was had, you know, these big Montague brand ovens with that are like us, you know, 50 times bigger than this. And I roasted the mushrooms, I roasted, mixed it with olive oil, garlic, red onions, bell peppers. And it, she brought that whole sheet pan, which is about as big as this, of, you know, Torch, oven torch, like 300, like 400 degrees at 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Smell like pizza. Dude, I smell the flavors coming yeah. out right now. Like people here, like they, they, they can't smell it, but I smell it. Smell like pizza. So that's what I was like, now I know how to 
make the veggie a little bit better. My veggie will be better. I'm not gonna say it's better than the one you make. I don't know, it might be. It's super good. I mean, you can, you can smell the roast. Yeah. Turn off the light. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, for the uh, guests who tuned in to uh, Dennis from Jeepney Guy, he also had the same technique of pre roasting his vegetables. So, word to the wise for those who want to go all veggie, uh, pre roast. I mean, you look at Dennis and you look at me. <laughs> They're the same. Uh, like the same. I love you, Dennis. I miss you. I miss your belly hugs. Man, we're going to Mr. Food. Next to each other once again. So, so we're—I mean, we got a process here, man. So hopefully, these can roast up in six minutes. Uh, we can see a little bit of char on it, and then I'm gonna—I'm gonna shift it up and it cools a little bit, or I'm just gonna—I'm just gonna go go get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, while we're waiting, we can uh, have like you tell us like. How did you get into the food game? Because we've been talking about our glory days and the clubs. How did you go from the clubs to the food? So, the clubs to food, man. Uh, my favorite, you know, throwing parties, it was stressful. Uh, but the main thing I love doing is just gathering and sharing, in my way, sharing Filipino American experiences. Uh, we, Nightclub quarters, we stayed out until 3, 2 a.m. Party ended at 1 30, 2, 2 a.m. And sometimes 3 a.m. It's like fish and rock. But my favorite part of doing the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Wednesday, sit with creative, we were going to eat late night eats. Studio okay. Cafe. Oh, yeah. Let me change this. I'm going to get the chicken silo. Fried chicken silo. I mean, that's good, you know, that's where I learned a little bit of what was going on, Filipino American culture. We we went to Westboro Denny's and we went to Barry yes, Denny's in San Jose. We went to Ling Na. Where are we gonna eat after the club? I hated like last dance. Let's go. Let's get first in line at lunch. So what I'm saying is I traveled the world doing entertainment and I saw so many different cultures of food represented. I saw the best empanada companies, the cheese steaks in New York, the raised papayas in New York, uh, Philly cheese steaks in Philly. I didn't see anything Filipino besides Jollibee, and that, that's usually a suburbia, you know. Uh, and I was like, why, why isn't there like a cool movie spot, you know? And, and I just kind of where I came up with that one, man, there's there's untapped business here and everybody loves Lumpia. So that's that's you know, I want to build a Lumpia company. And I know that when I come out with this idea, everyone else is gonna want to come over to the Lumpia company because we all love Lumpia and we all can make it pretty good. So I said, I gotta come up with a name that they can't that'll be the one and only. And that's where I came up with the Olympia Company, Best Rappers Alive. Nice, nice. Uh, your oven is uh, beeping about turning the food. Yeah, thanks, Chef. Good. So, what I do here is got my spoon. So, this function is great. You can toss it around a little, and that's what from it. Uh, other air fryers, they don't have any that option. So it's every time you got to move it around, this one does. Now it's bent on track. Three minutes more of that blaze. And you can smell that, right? Yeah, the garlic. Yeah. That's the flavor. That's what you want for the tenant. That's it right there. What's the powder? It is it. So, so okay. You got into the food game because you saw that there was a lack of like good food after the clubs. Where was the first nightclub you posted up at when you are launching the Olympia company? Was it 11 minutes? The Randall's party? It 
was was it Minnesota? Was it Minnesota? It was uh, Utah's king. Oh, mighty! It was mighty! Wow! It was like imagine just spreading the beast, and then you have it's like you know you're, when you're a boxer and you're coming up, and then you're like, oh, man, I want to be a boxer, and then they, I got to fight for you. You know, mm -hmm. this was what mighty was. It was like, yo, uh, we got triple threat performing. And it was like some special. Yeah, there was a B2S party there. A huge party. It was just like, yo. And Corey called me and said, Randall, I need to get a hold of your Olympia guy. That might be a good option. Mm -hmm. So now I can estimate what the cover is. Back then, I just had an a, a electric fryer from Target. You know, I had two of those. <laughs> and uh, can I borrow a tent? Can I borrow, uh, let's go to Costco by a table type of shit. You know what I mean? So. That was a good question. It was, it was Utah Street, Mighty, and we made, like, I mean, like $2,000, $2,500, a million dollars. And it was like, you know, and I was crazy enough that I was like, I want the Olympia Company to be where I'm rolling to order. And what I brought is like a whole bunch of cameras. This one bot, one camera, like the 64 quart head, top sprouty mix, bacon cheeseburgers, veggie mix. Yep. And that's where I actually you couldn't look at shit because I'm like, oh, I can go so fast and go all the quarter, had two prior, and I'm like, go, 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 go. I rolled them all, dude. Like, it was, that's what I do, like, well, I got, I got hands, you know? But I would never do that again. I was so stupid. <laughs> but it was a thrill. And, and thank you, Corey Cop and Randall and Triple Threat. That's in history. Thanks for bringing that question. Yeah, that was some real street hustle right there. That's crazy, bro. I'm actually starting to get flashbacks to my drunken haze being at Mighty, trying your your Olympias. That was the first time. That was the first time you know, like, like, a, like when you ain't got nothing, you're gonna like go to your sources. I'm gonna surround myself with my best people. And this is my shot. This is my mixtape. This is what I'm doing. I was like, sure, try this bacon cheeseburger. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, when you get that gratification, like this is the, this is lit. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is the shit. That's where you're like, that. that's what. Gets you to keep going, like, no, we got to You know, that was amazing. Man. So, yeah, yeah, we got it. So, I'm just going to roast it. Is that ready? Yeah, it's ready. It so, smells ready. It's ready, man. Going to. The bigger balls that these can You know what I love about so look at this. Look at this brush, guys. Yep. Hopefully I gotta turn the camera on this guy. But boom. Check it out. Ooh, look at that. You can see a little brown on him. It's like it drops like that. For the bottom, not so not as much. We're gonna put it in. Yeah, these are pretty hot. So now we don't got much more to do because now we're just gonna roll them up and show you. Gotta let these cool for about five minutes. And then we're gonna pop it around a little bit, spark air. You out because if I mix it with the kale right now, it's gonna get that kale. Uh, oh. but, ooh. No, 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 hold on, let me switch the camera. We are not like we're doing this all from scratch today, you know. 
You know what I love about like these like uh, chef demos is that we can get deep. You know, it's not just about the food, it's about where the food comes from. <laughs> Well, all right. So while you're mixing that up, a lot of people don't know that outside of the club game, you're also a big Omni Club promoter. Yeah. Um, that's just called progression. I've been promoting clubs for 10 years. And, you know, when you, when you like choose what your next step is, you have to evaluate, you evaluate yourself and say like, you know, how good of a promoter am I? I'm as good as I can ever be. But it's not really putting money into my wallet. It's just gathering. Everyone wants to get it free. I'm, I'm done with the cool thing. I want to do something like game changing, you know? And, and yeah, the nightclubs were great. So I was the guy, I was the on call guy that took care of all of the biggest talent from LA. So this is like 1998 to 2005 that, you know, I'm the guy who the Black Panthers call to bring to Storyville before it was Palang. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to dance at this thing they co-hosted. It's called the Peapod and Taboo and, 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 and Apple. Is this Wednesday night? I spent so many days with Apple, but he doesn't remember anything. He's just there smiling. But Taboo, we're just like, you know, this is the days when Taboo was like, you know, you get me a donut. You know, <laughs> two in the morning, like well, wallet or stuff like that. And Will I Am, I had them, and they had like a studio in Bodega Bay. And I was like, yeah, I'll drive you guys home. You guys are celebrities. But then you know, it was three hours after the club. So I was that guy, and I moved into. So I did those shows. I brought artists to the stage before the radio stations did. And then I got into comedy. I said, man, I want to be the Filipino B. Diddy or Russell Simmons. I'm like, man, we, we got some good comedians out there. It's like, there's Navarrete, and there's like Joey Gila, and all Bay Area guys. But there's this one guy that, you know, all the people I do parties with in LA, they say, you need to bring Joe Coy out there. Joe Coy. I'm like, it's Joe Coy. All right. Yeah, yeah he's on Comedy Central. He's going to be Huge, I'll shell out just like a shell down six thousand dollars for a black eye piece. I was like, oh, man. he's gonna blow up. Same thing with Joe Coy. I'm like, oh, he's a comedian, he's gonna be like Eddie Murphy. Man, so you know, for Joe Coy, what how long ago? It's not funny like, when you're from our you're like, yo. Six G's and another six G's yeah. is like here to Palace of Fine Arts, come into a show. This guy's so good. And then I'm touch blue, be the opening. Uh, and, and Joey Gila and kind of like other artists. And I was like, is, is, is this is going to be made for a very good moment? And I had like 300 people in this moment, person that me. And that was my first uh, uppercut to, to the chin. And I was like, good, but he wasn't. No, we didn't know him yet. We didn't know comedy yet. We didn't. I was just, I was just trying to like. But what it did do was gain the brother, you know. And after that, you know, I was with the right people, and I went on a string of eight years touring a show called Filipino Kings of Comedy, which the show to Netflix was. And they said I wasn't ready, you know, like you don't have a lineup that is like game cook. You know, I had agents tell me that, like, but had a lineup, like, no girls want them. I'm like, that's them. And I'm like, so I'm that, man, but some girls do want to have them. Like, they're speaking for white and red or whatever, Comedy Central standard. So I said, you know, it's all a lesson, man. If any business, any inspiration you want to do, don't wait on the big man. Don't wait on the big network. Put up your own channel. Yep. Do it yourself. That's the only way. Because if you wait for the big ticket, you know that. You know, don't wait and like wait for the paint to dry. You know, paint your own picture and create your own vision. You know, so yeah, comedy, and I might get back into it. 
Joe's been in conversations, man. His favorite movie is those the Tanola. Who knows? You know? But I mean, I got some guy uh, E40 on my team. He's, he's pretty well known. Well, that's the next story we gotta go into. Yeah. That's the next story. Yeah. Well, all right, what are we gonna do with this? Let's cool down. Let's cool down. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna get in there. All right, here, here comes the kale. So, mixing that in. Yeah. I'm gonna put the name kale on there. It's gonna be, it better be the most common color. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of oil. Uh, the coconut, I mean, I'm gonna coconut on the outside, but I'm gonna. So, the, the secret to air frying is. The oil is not touching the inside, so we need to make sure that the oil is mixed in well with the can, especially can. You know, so we're mixing that in. I don't have to use my hands to the spoon, and I'm also cooling it down at the same time. And the reason why I'm desperate at this stuff is because I tried it many times. Crazy, it just works. And so I guess this is uh, about ready to roll, man. It's rolling up. Yeah. We're gonna roll. So speaking of the egg um, as the glue, um, I have some pre-made cornstarch glue right here. And I go cornstarch all day. We get companies cornstarch. Um, because we have to, but for all the veggie ones, uh, we stay with it and it, we just find that it works better. And we always have the source, so it's a little bit of water. Um, it's like one part, two parts water to, to like uh, one, uh, three parts water to one part cornstarch. Then you warm it up and uh, soft. I mean, we make this every morning. This is what. Puts everything together. So, I don't even know you get the start to move here. Like, I don't know. Where does this go? What is it? What is it the, well, I mean, it together? Do you use flour if it's not if it's not egg? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm looking at pot. So if you're using egg and egg yolk, you have that little yellow stain on. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to put that in my cookies and stores. What starts is that white? And it's sticky, man. And it's just so, so versatile. That's the word of the day for stuff. So, um, and I need to cook mold. And this is a batch for guys. I'm selling, I'm selling you. Branded. But also, you know, I'm the business, man. Dry ice. I got dry ice. You guys ever need dry ice? Give me a. Okay. Okay. Am I gonna? So I'm gonna get the lumpia wrappers out here. I'm gonna take it out here because everyone's gonna ask, which ones do you use? These ones. <laughs> <laughs> this is the trade ticket right here. You can't yeah, get this one out. It's a little tricky. Yes. <laughs> so, special technique I like to do is. Uh, right. Use Menlo's. If you're doing this with Menlo's, it's going to crack in your hand. Mom, auntie, when they used to get you making movies, what did they do, Debbie? They sent me to the bathroom. They said, feel it. You oh. feel it? <laughs> you know, here, you just feel it out. So, here it is. How you doing? Hey, you guys can watch it. Right here. I said, look at the right there. That's it. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. There you go. So we're gonna. I'm gonna do about. Let's do about six, seven of them. I'm gonna lay it out. Uh, what we do with the company. You're like tapped out for space. Take layers, right? Just go one and. Another one right there. And 
which is what I used to do. Is like, and I wanted to like, I just got geeked out into the like science of lumpia wrapping. It's like I'm with nerdy Bruce Lee stuff, man. So, so I laid it out here. So, yeah, my portions. Yellow scoop for this guy. That is um, in the packet right here. And I'll do one first, okay? So it's like all over the place. It's like hollow. Um, it's like the shape of like that. Even if it's like, like that, you can still form from the outside. You know, you can still move things around. So don't get nervous if it's like this. You can always fix it from the outside. So I like to like touch the tips there. This is like Lumpia Rolling 101 at the Lumpia Company. Touch the tips there. Uh, the reason why this is not one wrong or right way to do it, but you got to stay to the my product line standard. And I like to make it like that, reminiscent of like a cigar. Right? The bill of your cap is covering the wrap. Huh? The bill of your cap is covering the wrap. There you go. There you go. There you go. So, and I like to bring this up, all right? So, how do I explain this? So, this is the tuck and roll technique. Tuck and roll is if you're a fat boy like me, so when the wind is blowing on your t shirt and gets stuck underneath your belly right here, <laughs> right? And it's like the worst feeling, but that's how I can explain it. So, this, see how it's just stuck under your belly, like, damn it. And then you just, you're like, so you have to like pull your shirt down. That's the equivalent. So once you have this locked, this is the goal like to move forward. You move forward, you tuck that in, that's a lock. So it moves messy, it doesn't look like in line, but once you move forward, everything is better. Mm -hmm. So there, and the basting brush, okay? So this is your cornstarch mixture, and there it is, that's glue. That's glue, everybody. And that's so I'm gonna I'm gonna do all these. So at the kitchen, we have like six people per table. One each person doing one function. One person is like working, one person's shaping, the other person's putting the wrappers down. So I learned that. Cooking next to bakers, cooking next to empanada makers. Uh, fuck all these lay things out. So, so uh, Rose has a question for you. Yeah. Um, she never mastered the the role, but now she's got the info. But what's your favorite brand of wrapper? <laughs> um, you go to the store. Um, you got the names. <laughs> um, there's the one one that Seafood City you can get. Uh, no, Island Pacific you can get is a it's called a Tropics. It's a green one. It's a, it's a real good one. Uh, and I think it's almost the same manufacturer as this one. They just like they get mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Korean or Chinese brands that, uh, that are all square, like they they uh they're made nice, man. Uh, Mexico's delicious, um, but you lose a lot of them, and and they're like I think they they made this stuff better, but they like stick together for too long. You just you're not a fast roller, even though you can dry out. So Elisa wants to know what is the approximate measurement for the lumpia filling for one burst? Um, that's what these are for. Yeah. So what's that? Is that one cup? This or is cup? this is a uh, I believe this is like a two two uh this is like a two point five ounce. So for veggie, there's a lot of air in here, so we go bigger. So for uh, our other ones, Shanghai, um, in kitchen terms. All of the portions, these are for cookies. This is for everything baking. They have purple ones that are super small, like half ounce or whatever. And then they have a black one and it goes to yellow and then it goes to red. It goes to yeah. 
So for the veggie, whenever my team calls me and I'm not in, you know, hey, you mean we made a new mix? What portion you want? I'm like, oh, yellow, 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 and I go cheeseburger size. This is our cheeseburger size. Mm -hmm. So see how it's like so loose, but you just got to hold it together and then bring it over, tuck that in, and then you can straighten things out here and then just go forward. So what's harder, uh, rolling lumpias or putting a baby diaper on baby? Dude, my baby, she likes to play games, man. When I got to change her diaper, dude, like a, oh, man. Uh, this is way easier, man. Uh, the diapers are cool. You got like Velcro, got all that stuff. But I mean, I love rolling lumpias. I mean, I love being with my baby, but you know, changing the diaper, you just want to make sure it gets on and off and then let's play after it's on, man. Especially when she's running around in the shower. <laughs> and I'm going to wipe you down. Yeah, my daughter's the cutest thing. She has this dance. She says, no diaper, no diaper. <laughs> and it's like, you know, my favorite. But, uh, but yeah, how do you know I have a kid? My second one coming, her name is Aina. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Family's expanding. Yep, we're going to expand the little Lumpia line. And then what are the, what those are? The ones. So, okay, we made enough for the test cup today. So, we're going to put this mix to the side and get it going. So, we're going to preheat again. Here we go. So I'm going to preheat air fry. And I'm going to go so eight minutes. Yes. Is that longer because it's vegetables or I don't think? Uh, I think that uh, we already put the inside, so it is. I think so. So I'm just okay. There it is. So I'm going to prep these before they go in there. What I'm going to do is, well, and today we're going to do the outside with uh, this refried coconut oil. And the reason I chose this, I just wanted to show another option. Everyone has the, uh, the virgin olive oil, but this is different from the, the uh, Canned ones that you get are solid. As you can see, this kind of looks like a coconut drink. Yep. Uh, at room temp, it's liquid. So you can spread the love around. So what we're going to do is uh, this is a refined one. And I think the smoke point uh, is a little higher than 350, 400. But we're, we're cooking at 350. So I'm going to, it's brand new here. Uh, I haven't used this yet. I used the other coconut oil, but this one I found at the market. I'm going to do three of them in all of one. And I do the three left ones because of one. The top left level. I go three and three. And then these. What were you saying? Uh, I was about to say something, but I want to know what you're doing over there. The overhead. So you just put a little bit in that bowl. Yeah. I'm uh, you need to open it up. So uh, I'm gonna wash it. And we're going to brush the where it touches, or oh, it's all around. There you all go. around, all around. So, 
So today I oil the kale. Um, so there's oil inside and hopefully that spreads to the inner layer. Sometimes when, if you don't do that, when you air fry, my experience was on the inside, you had, um, you had a, a, just like a warmed up toasted flour, which I don't flavor. But I boiled the kale and I did all those coconut and this is gonna be like, uh, Compare. Compare and contrast. Yeah. And what you can also do, if you guys are all gonna roll your own ideas, uh, is uh, kind of like a filo. It's the the whole little foil in it. You know, spray that side so that flavor is inside. And, uh, how about butter? Some melted butter. Butter will uh it doesn't have it's gonna burn faster. So it like just how butter caramelizes. So coconut oil has a higher uh, burn point, smoke point. So uh that's why I mean if that was the case, people would be frying the butter all the time. <laughs> you know, like saute, you know? yeah. yeah. So these are olive oils, and those are the coconuts. Uh, this another way here. So CM wanted to know how many minutes are we going to put these in for? Um, we we are putting them eight minutes. Eight minutes, and then I'm gonna also I'm gonna go two, two. All right, and I got a special guest today uh, joining. You know, another vegetarian lumpia that I put in saran wrap. Ready to go. Elote. For those who don't know, what's in the elote? What is the elote? Fire roasted corn sauteed with butter. Put a little bit of black bean in there to balance. Nice jalapeno, the green onions. A lot of mayo in my tea. So we're air frying it. You know, it's not the healthiest, but vegetarian. <laughs> so it's got glue on it. It's got glue on it. So spray it. You can wash them. You can just lather them with your hand. I love hands all over. Okay. So where are we at here? Preheat. Damn, it's moving faster than. Yeah, man, let's fry that shit up. It's dinner time. I think get the alert, man. It's really like it was ready on. So, I'm going to start over fast. Well, uh, Alex is setting that up. I want to do a community announcement. Uh, the Sama Sama Collective right, is having a dance a thon uh, this weekend. Um, so I put it on the chat for everyone to go check out. I'm also going to share my screen so you can learn more about it. If you guys aren't familiar with the Sama Sama Cooperative, uh, they are a local Bay Area group that is out there teaching our youth uh, about our culture. Uh, to go check them out. Oh, and we got special guest Ruby Abara. Ruby! So we're making our uh, Ruby Ruby. 
let's go. All right, it's in there. Wow. Go ahead and make you into the pot. Putting it in, putting it in, guys. All right, putting it where eight minutes. So, while well, uh, the Rubio frying up, you know, you're one of the very few Filipino food entrepreneurs that has a celebrity investor. Ooh. Tell us the story about how you and uh, All right. Right. Ford got together. I wish I could FaceTime him right now. But uh, long story short, uh, one day I got a phone call and it was uh, DJ E Rock. And I was like, ah, what's E Rock want? It's like, you don't know me. I, I, I like speakerphone, I like FaceTime. I don't do it like regular talk. It's pretty so, uh, you rock with, hey, get your out. I got Earl Stevens on the phone. He wants to holler at you about this. I'm like, okay, hey, what's up, you rock? Hey, uh, what's up, Earl? He said, yo, Alex, I've been watching you. Uh, uh, I don't like smoothies. And uh, people need to know that I'm from Leo, and three things I like to eat is number one is oxtail. I love oxtail, but I don't eat oxtail as much anymore. Number two, I like chilies. But even more so, what people don't know is my favorite dish is one. He'll say that story every time. And I'm like, well, I make lumpia. He's like, it was my dream to have a lumpia company. A, a lumpia company? I have a big lumpia company. <laughs> and then, short, you know, long story short, I was like, yo, I'll send you over some stuff. Um, let me know what you think. And, and, uh, and fast forward to yo, Alex, I like the traditional one you said. Uh, I like the one with the cabbage, the carrots, the peas, the corn. So he's a real Filipino from Malayo. And he's like, but people, we need to get people to eat healthy, not the uh, pork or the chicken and beef. Uh, let's make a turkey. Yeah. So if you look on our menu, the Earl special turkey veggie lumpia, that's E40's lumpia. He loves lumpia so much that I have him, it's like he has a lumpia subscription every week. He's like, Alex, my freezer's running out, I need more. Because I think he, he eats a lot of himself because he loves it. Because everyone that talks to him on the phone, he's like, I'm eating my shit, I'm eating my lumpia. But I think when he had guests come to the studio, Speech everybody. So one time he said, I'm going to put the whole wine game, the whole rap game on wine. I said, let's put the whole rap game on food. So that guy's make, you know, he's the counselor, man. And he's like the best partner I could ever have. I, I, I didn't even think, I had other people in mind as a partner, but he's the perfect fit because he, he let me do my thing. He checks on me, makes sure that I'm making the right decisions, and uh, we got some big plans. So, it was a big area, and he loves Filipinos. I was like, dude, you see that shot out he gave us on uh, my first? Yeah, man, that was huge. I was like, it was Too Short's fault because Too Short said, hey, man, we got to shout out the Filipinos. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, I'm even thinking about it. If you rewind it and check that video, his eyes light up. Oh, 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 I forgot something. I forgot something. <laughs> the cue, he said, shout out to the Filipinos. Shouts out to Chef Alex. Oh, it could have been anybody else. It could have been shout out to the Desi. It could have been shout out to Pacquiao. But he said, shut up. The whole world was watching. He said, shout out to Chef Alex. Hey, don't try to move your company. I was like, no, that's why he's the best partner. Just 
We're about four minutes away. So for everyone uh, watching, I'm going to be putting in uh, to, a, to a survey. If folks could fill this out, you know, this uh, this cooking series is made possible by a grant that Sultan got. And so whenever we get grants, we need to get some data. So if you guys can fill out these, these surveys that I put on the chat, sure. I'd much appreciate it. Shout out to Sultan for getting this and making this possible. We weren't able to build out this streaming hub if it wasn't for Sultan. If uh, folks who don't know, whenever you're in trouble out in the Bay or in San Francisco, if you've got a landlord who's giving you hassles, you've got a boss who's trying to fire you for no reason, if you're just trying to find city services, you go to Sobcan, you got your back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Was there a case that you guys helped out with that scenario, like to help out some people? Oh man, Sobcan's helped so many people, so many people. They've like uh, bought landlords, they've been able to buy whole apartment buildings where Filipinos have been living, make sure it just stays within the community. Dude, I, I love what you're building out here, man. You need to bring the city back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and if it wasn't people like you, man. Well, I mean, it's not just me, man. There's a whole community of activists and organizers out there just trying to make sure. So this is where I got a flip on. Um, usually, some time comes in, but uh, because you do that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be handy with the skills. So, um, back up, just shuffle. And this guy, the lower level. Yeah, the lower level. Man. Can't, can't wait to eat those. So, I'm going to pull the uh, kale ones out first, man, and give those another three minutes. So, I'm putting up the kale ones first. Finish with the love that's good. So don't leave. You're gonna see these come out. So where else can people find the look your company out that month? We are making a move to San Francisco. Uh, we're working on a release date. Uh, it sounds like a Netflix thing. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I'm just getting things straightened out. Uh, I'm thinking of like serving mocha next to beers. In uh, just a small, friendly, you know, walk up spot where you can get a little bit of beer. Uh, next to the ballpark, right at Mercado, but there's a certain room in there that I'm, uh, I'm moving things around. Yeah, where's, where's Mercado at? Mercado is on Townsend Street, second between second and third in Townsend, just across the street from all the action of the, uh, the San Francisco Giants, the ballpark. Uh, beautiful spot. And I just want to make sure that I open with everything. So, um, I've been popping up out of there. My trailer's back there. We do lunches from time to time. But the whole Indian beer concept is a new thing that I'm doing. So, you catch us there. Uh, hope we'll be back in the ballpark later in the season or next year. Um, and that's it for now. Um, frozen shipping is uh, doing pretty well. Regina says that she loves Bad Oak and the Lupia and Tater Tots. Our hello. Bad Oak is our bar concept, and that's our first ever pop-up, and it's busy as hell, and um, we're just having fun, and we're doing Filipino toppings on top of Tater Tots. Um, I just thought it was fun if we do uh, double gravy and uh, braised chicken. On, uh, double chicken on uh, tater tots mixed with a mixture of pico and sour cream. And we got the sisa tots with the verde aioli that I have in here. And uh, it's pork belly sisa with, uh, with uh, you know, your sisa uh, peppers and onions and verde sauce. And we got the local mocha one, which is New York State with gravy and oh my god, local mocha. That one's good. So, I'm gonna play around with these sauces today. Um, yeah, sweet chili is like the number one thing that my customers ask, but I tend to like it's do something different, man. Like it's like asking me for sweet and sour sauce. This is our verde aioli sauce, it goes good with the sea steak. Um, it's gonna go well with the elote today. Um, this is our soy sauce aioli. 
has a bit of pepper, sugar. This is the one that goes with the tenola and the TLC veggie. This is my peach habanero sweet dough. Oh, that's the third one. And no, no, this is the hot sauce. This is my sweet chili. Okay, so let's see where we're at here. Will be ready. I think it's ready. It says it's I done. Think the veggies are ready for sure. See that, Chris? See that over there, right there. Oh, it's nice and golden. This one's important, right? So, uh, I'm going to run out of these guys. So, it's, it's a matter of trial and error with the air fryers, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the top level, man. Um, these are these are ready. So I'm gonna play cheese how I would a avocado. Pull up, pull here. You know, celebrating the veggies here, guys. So. Oh, so we have arugula. Let's go with the arugula on the bottom of the base. So how come you didn't put the arugula inside the little The the kale. I do arugula with my Napa Valley one. It has a pepper punch that goes with good with cheese. Um, kale. I think it just roasts it. Yeah, it hit, so it's, it's crispy, but it has like a big quality. So you can see like. Different colors in there. You got, got the potato and the mushroom there. Um, I'm trying to find the pepper. There's a pepper. So that, that one. Thanks for getting the last one. All right. Yeah, so we got this stack here, and I'm going to. I like to go with the uh, Yoli, and then we have our like, house of jar here. Excellent. Right there, and we serve that each and every day. Um, I like to smother. You want to like flake, you know, get the going on there. Um, but you could also, you know, have the option to dump it. These other options right there. Today. Nice chunk, I like it. That's the peach, right? The peach it's nice. Nice. Okay. I started with the kingdom because that was like the Filipino thing to do. But when I put it next to peach habanero, it's a little peach. Yeah, yeah. Or is it, deep? it is, man. Yeah. I mean, I just don't do things because it's Filipino. Right? So um, I didn't finish my garnish here. I got it. Garnish. What, what is that garnish? Right, right top. This is the fried shrimp. Fried garlic. Fried garlic there. And there's my scallion. So that's, that's it right there. And then I'm going to let take the other guys out here and show you what they look like. And that's the same guy on the list. All right. So, Desi's favorite. These are the Olocas. 
So these have been caught a lot of time because you know, here, Mexipino. Okay. So I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to put the arugula on the bottom. Not the arugula, I mean, you should do the cabbage and then this Stop first, don't burn those fingers. You do these guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could hear the crunch from you. Oh, you can smell it. The cheese, man. Here we go. This guy. Oh, man. I mean, there's a little bit that gets the best response. This dessert. This part right here. Okay? Let me not. Okay? And we're going to go through the egg. A splash of sauce. And we get them tortilla. Tortilla, that's uh, that's cheese, right? Yeah. Crumbled Mexican cheese. Yeah, it's like their parmesan. But it's fine, man. And then I keep it street. Yep. You know, gotta keep it street. Oh, what's that? The hot peppers? I mean, man, this is the chili line. Right there. I mean, Come on, man. Come on, bro. Get the citrus. There you go. Yeah, man. I mean, we're eating veggie. This is what I'm doing right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the kale, mushroom, garlic, potato, lumpia, the TLC veggie. I introduced you that. And this is the world famous lumpia. Tortilla cheese, verde aioli, wine squeezed all over. I put these two. Yeah, awesome. thank you. Yo, thank you, Alex. For Toto's a little bit company. Thank you for everybody who stuck around. We went a little bit over time, but you know, we like to get deep in these chef demos. It's not just about the food. Does he, man? You gotta try it. You gotta eat it. Man. I'm fine, yeah. Which last time? Um, this one. 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 This you have an air fryer, everyone can do this. Thank you, Alex, for coming out. If I can do it, you can do it for sure. Yep. Um, next month on the fourth Thursday, we have the Surat Shop coming, and they're going to be doing their rendition of healthy Olive Garden Filipino food. They're the so what that is, I don't know, but we'll find out. Dude, they're crazy. Oh, cool. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I'll catch you next month. Thank you.